After years of attacking Donald Trump and putting a bullseye on his head, wait till you see what Biden is saying now. You gotta check this out. Was snapping repeatedly at Lester Holt. He had this interview on NBC. We knew that this it's was lost. going to happen. And Lester Holt asked him about what was the word he used. He used um, bullseye. the bullseye comment. And, and the president was remorseful for actually using that word. Listen. Well, it's not unusual. He's going to surround himself with people who agree with, completely with him. Have a voting record. I support him. Even though if you go back and listen to those things that J.D. Vance said about Trump. <laughs> well, he said some things about you, yeah. Oh, no. Well, he said something about me, but see what he said about Trump. What's with you guys? Come on, man. You called your opponent an existential threat uh, on a call a week ago. You said it's time to put Trump in the bullseye. There's some dispute about the, the context, but I think you appreciate the I didn't words. I crosshairs. I was talking about focus on. Look, the truth of the matter was, what I guess I was talking about at the time was, there was very little focus on Trump's uh, agenda. Yeah, the term was bullseye. It was, a, it was a mistake to use the word. I didn't, I didn't say crosshairs. I meant bullseye. I meant focus on him. Focus on what he's doing. I'm going to debate him when we agreed to debate, and I'm going to debate him in September. But if, if the opportunity came up to do one between now and then, is there, is there a sense of wanting to get back on the horse? I'm on the horse. Where have you been? All right. Mr. President, it's always good to talk to you. Good to see you. Thank you for making some time for us. Sometimes come and talk to me about what we should be talking about. What? And of course, what Joe Biden. Do I believe that's what Joe Biden intended when he said put Trump in a bullseye? No, probably not. But the rhetoric that this man has been shouting from the rooftops for the last four, five, six years about Donald Trump. Yes, I would say that would radicalize some ill-informed people to make some severe, drastic actions. I mean, for goodness sake, he called us MAGA extremists. The mainstream media has been calling him Hitler on a day-to-day -day basis, and he has been helping push that narrative. The rhetoric that they have been spewing for years is incredibly toxic. So yes, I do think that played an impact on what happened Saturday. Back and forth. At least I didn't say crosshairs. Uh, Katie Pavlich is Good joining us live here morning. at the RNC. Katie, what did you make of the damage control that uh, Joe Biden was trying to do last night on NBC? Well, I think just overall, the president and his party, their calls for unity and toning down the temperature lasted about 12 hours. Uh, the president clearly used the Oval Office for political purposes, not to really bring the country together. And I think the bigger issue than him using a term like bullseye is the fact that he is not at all willing to hold anybody accountable for what happened. You had Mayorkas yesterday, the Homeland Security Secretary, going out for the first press conference at the White House since this happened, Six. saying he has 100% confidence in the Secret Service oh. uh, and it's just and, and the president has the ability to hold people accountable for what happened and he's not doing it and just and there's another thing in a long list of catastrophic failures Afghanistan the Secretary of Defense disappearing for weeks at a time without telling anybody and then of course the former president almost being killed over the weekend there's a lot of finger pointing going on and a complete lack of accountability uh, you, you know maybe you want to wait for the investigation first but you don't say you have 100% confidence. I mean, what would it take for them not to have confidence in at least someone uh, at the Secret Service? The only reason that Donald Trump is alive today is because it was a miracle by God. He just so happened to turn his head at the exact right time. If he had been a half a second too late, half a second too early, we would not be having this conversation right now. So to not even fire a single member of the Secret Service, that is outrageous. They were either grossly, grossly incompetent and not capable of doing their jobs, number one, or this was a pre-planned thing. That Those are the only two options in my mind. How do you not check a roof that is 150 yards away? I just seriously find it hard to believe that the Secret Service could be this incompetent. I think there had to be some foul play involved. For it to save his first term, he's desperate for another term and he wants to save his candidacy. And now you're seeing him going back to the rhetoric that he's already- What's your prediction? Pushing. Do you think he'll drop out? I don't think he's going anywhere. Absolutely not. I think they're going to have to. If he doesn't want to go, he's not going. And he's not going. And Jill is not going either. So right. and I don't he's, think he's going anywhere. If he's talking about unity, it's hard to be the head of a party 
that is in the middle of a civil war about yeah. whether or not you should be the leader. Yeah, if you can't even unify your own party, it's going to be difficult to unify yeah. the country, it's, right? And it's just a, an interesting stiff shift in tone after four years of this president and his entire party, uh, not only going after Donald Trump, but going after anybody who voted for him as a MAGA extremist, a, an existential threat to democracy. It's quite interesting that they're trying to switch the tone now as the president is drowning when it comes to his own so, party. You know, so, I'm Katie, sure. so as the... He's drowning. You got the former president. And I just got to get your reaction to the moment he walked in. Mm -hmm. And the, so many people were shocked at the moment because you see the bandage of yeah. a bullet that went through his ear, essentially, mm -hmm. and they had to stitch it back together. Mm -hmm. And it, it looks like the former president was taken back. Yes, you absolutely. Were there, yeah, I was in the arena, watched him walk in, and he, I'd never seen him like that. You know, we right. watch him all the time. He's one of the most televised uh, presidents in the history of the country. And to see him walk out and to just have that emotion on his face. Yeah. Clearly, he's been through so much over the past six years as he's entered politics, but over the past 48 hours, his life was on the line, and he knows that, and it was obviously a very humbling moment for him, and for him to walk into a crowd of people who are there to support him uh, after he barely escaped death, uh, I think was a huge thing for him and a huge thing for the country. Katie, you know what this reminds me of? That is a perfect match for the mood that Melania put in that letter. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, yes. it's the family. He's a family person. Yet right. you think he's a political animal. He is a father, a grandfather. He is a husband. Yeah. And that's what this is about. And start revisiting why you have the animosity towards him yeah. because he's a human being. And that 20-year-old monster, her words, does not understand that. Well, to that point, Katie, Donald Trump is not a politician. He's just a man who calls it as he sees it. He saw corruption. He saw deceit in Washington, D.C. He's a multi-billionaire. He has all these resources at his capability. And he said, you know what? I'm going to go in there. I'm going to make it right. And you know what? He gave it his damn best in 2016 to 2020. And he would have got even more accomplished if the Washington, D.C. swamp did not constantly bombard him with problem after problem, just trying to fight him on every single issue. But deep down at heart, He's a family man. He just wants to do right by everybody, do right by the nation, do right by his family. And yes, he was visibly shaken here, but think about it. Who wouldn't be? You were this close to losing your life and God gave you another chance. God said, you know what? Not yet. Not yet. You still have more work to do. And I believe he does. He's going to unite this country. He's going to bring America back to prosperity. I think we're going to be winning on so many different levels. We're all going to come together and agree Donald Trump is the man for this position. America has never been so prosperous. Thank God for Donald Trump. I'm just praying to God that he makes it there and they don't take this man out again because God knows we need him. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on this down below. Do you think there's going to be another attack on Donald Trump or do you think he's going to up his security measures and we won't have any more issues? Let me know. I'd love to hear that. And if you enjoyed, make sure to smash that like, comment, subscribe, and wish you guys nothing but the best. Till next time.